Meet John from London. Don't be caught again. I need to get that fine paid today. Meet Kevin from Halifax. It's a con. You know, it's a total con. I'm being sick. And meet the tourist police of Patia, Tyler. Oh, there you are. Oh, there you are. It's 10 p.m. Patia, Thailand. No have guarantee for money or not? Yeah, but no guarantee. They have they guarantee me or not? Dave and Nikki from Loughborough have had their holiday money stolen. Five thousand pounds in cash. We're going to put it in the bank on Monday because the banks aren't open today, and we didn't get here till later on. Yesterday afternoon. The couple weren't the victims of a mugging, though. Their money was stolen from their hotel safety deposit box. I suppose, like, you've got to be careful, but you just don't expect it to happen to you, do you? We didn't think, like, if you're having it in a hotel reception, it's a bit different. I mean, when you're out on the streets, you can expect something, but not in your own hotel. The robbery has left Dave and Nicky penniless. With no credit cards or traveller's checks, they need money fast. I rang my mum up and she'll send some money over for her to get us through, but that won't come till Thursday. It's another week. Until then, the couple have only £10 in cash to survive on. Just two hours' drive from Bangkok, Pattaya is visited by more than 400,000 tourists every year. Almost half of them are British. Looking after the holidaymakers are the city's 70 tourist police officers. Lieutenant Tony has been working in Pattaya for nine months. Do you like it here? Mm, yes, that's right. I, I'm lying here. I'm like my work, I'm like my boss, I'm like my staff. I like everybody in here. I like the people, Thai people, and foreign and tourism. I like everybody I like. But for many tourists, the city's main attraction is not the beaches, it's the nightlife. A clean, respectable place where a lot of lads go. With its 200 bars and go go clubs, Pattaya is the sex capital of Thailand. You move further away from God in Thailand. The women, very good, very good, very sexy. That's a sleaze hole. Mom, I'm all right. I've had a good time. Dad, get yourself over here. You'll love it. But the city's booming sex industry makes it a magnet for crime. It's 2 a.m. Dave and Nikki's holiday money is still missing from the hotel safety deposit box. The management is refusing to admit liability. And to make matters worse, the couple are not insured. And I don't think the hotel are going to refund us, are they? <laughs> the money, I don't think they're going to pay £5,000 out of their pocket, so I don't know. We didn't keep it in the room. It says, don't keep your money in your room, you're responsible. Put it in safety deposit box. Yeah, it does say that on the door, the back of the I'm door. Put it in your safety deposit box and it's less safe than with, in your and room. we have the key with us at all times. The police can offer little help. What are you going to do now? Uh, now, uh, the inspector, huh? yeah? this cat is the inspector. He, he will go to see inspector tomorrow and, oh. and tell about the detail, all the detail. And will we get money back or, don't, or does the hotel give money back? Or? Must, must find uh, who stole it and get money back. But if you don't find who stole it, no money? Yeah. <laughs> it's morning. Tourist police trainee Tong Kai is having an English lesson. Can you tell me the way to Seabreeze Hotel? Seabreeze? Yes, you know it? Do you know where is it? Pattaya, Central or Pattaya or...? I think it's on Hat Jom Tien. Hat Jom Tien, yes. yes. In, in the south of Pattaya. 
Tonkai is training to become a translator, but he's finding it tough. Yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> Quite difficult. Tonkai's English and his patience are about to be put to the test by Claude Jolicare, who claims he's been attacked by a man with a knife. Somebody, somebody, I just, a phalang just attacked me, swing a knife at me that long. No. Claude says he was attacked in an apartment block a mile from the police station. What's happened? I, I need the police right now, that building, control that guy, who put that guy in the first plane. It's a danger for the society. Claude takes the police to the scene of his attack. I'm there. Yes, sir. He, he, chased, he tried to chase me. I run. And the elevator don't want to respond. And he hit me. He banged me. He slapped me. My head violently hit, hit that wall. And he had that knife, that butcher knife pottering in that, uh, in that pocket. Yes, sir. He get the knife out. He tried to slang the, 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 the knife. At the apartment block, the attacker is nowhere to be seen. OK, I understand. But now he is... He don't stay here, he, he go away. away. I say, OK, I just say, OK, I'm sure probably he's not taking his time to figure that out. I maybe go direct to the police and he run away. Claude wants the police to search the building. Okay, yes, sir, you want to stay OK? I never saw that security wall when I was born. But with no further evidence, the police leave. The manager of the apartments encourages everyone to go. We bring money to your country. Bye, 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 Louis. Bye, Louis. We bring a lot of money to your country. Oh, respect bye, 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 me. Bye, 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 respect bye, bye, to you. Bye, bye. Don't, don't see me tie. Don't see me tie. Don't pass oh, 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 And I must oh, oh, pay oh, oh, for that? Come on. Be a gentleman. Get out, get don't out. Say, don't say, come on. Get out, get don't. out. Atiyah is also home to 10,000 expats. Many own bars and clubs in the sex district, the center of the city's crime problems. At the police station, officers arrest a 17-year-old boy who has fired a gun at them. They discover a pistol, 50 bullets, and a thousand pounds in cash. The money was stolen from Peter Schmidt. Peter owns a gay nightclub, and the boy, Wirawek Chanson, was staying at Peter's house. <coughs> I, woke, I woke up because I feel, some, I feel something wrong, you know, because uh, uh, I was army before, and uh, when there's something wrong around me, as I wake up, you know, there's something not normal. Then I, uh, uh, my brain started working after two hours sleep. Uh, I go out, go first to the police station and after to the bus station, and then uh, I see him there. Rather than make a quick getaway to Bangkok, Wirirek was waiting for a 50p bus ride. When he see me, he try he, he uh, run away. Huh? And uh, after a while, you know, we, we catch him or want to catch him. He was not close enough. He take the gun out, uh, out uh, and shoot on us. The police questioned the boy. I don't understand it, you know, because I'm always good, you know, some, sometimes they have no money and I give some money for food and something like that. I don't understand it. Oh, the people dying, yeah, in a way. Huh? The police are happy, and the local press arrive to record the arrest. This is quite normal. It's a nightlife area, you know. Everybody wants to make money. Somebody have no money and somebody have money. Sometimes the foreigners, they show a lot of money. So the boys, what they have in the pocket? I feel sorry to them, because... Uh, 
only one dream, a little dream, you know, with a little bit of money. How, how, for long is that money? For, for, for two weeks, three weeks, enjoy a little bit, then the money is away. Wiruwek is charged with robbery and attempted murder. He's led to the cells. But it's not just Thais who are in the prison. There's also British tourists. Patia Police Station, Thailand. Wirawek has been arrested for attempted murder and robbery. One of his cellmates is British tourist John Fletcher. John is about to complete a month's imprisonment after failing to pay a £250 hotel bill. Helping him deal with the Thai authorities is British consular officer Barry Kenny. I think on the, the criminal front, uh, we have about 100 cases a year in Pattaya, two, three a week. Uh, they range from fairly small offences such as visa overstay, working without a work permit, to much more serious cases of assault or failure to pay bills and also uh, possession or distribution of prohibitive substances and sex offences. Barry is at the police station to discuss John's pending release. John is one of an estimated 130 British nationals currently held in Thai jails. John Fletcher, can you be angry? He's uh, asking you to remain here uh, while I see the prisoner. Is that all right? OK, you wait here. Stop there. It's not John's first time in a Thai prison. Last year, he spent six months in a Bangkok jail for overstaying his tourist visa. Keen to get out? Oh, everyone's keen to get out, I think. It's 24 hours since Dave and Nikki's £5,000 holiday money was stolen. They're desperate for cash. I had a necklace and because I've got no money, I had to pawn it. So I've just pawned it to give me some money, to give me a bit of a light break. The couple returned to the police station. If we go to the police every day and like tell them every day, every day, and like keep asking them, they apparently they have the power to, to threaten the hotel and shut it down. So hopefully the hotel will give us the money back. Their case is taken on by Police Major Colonel Poon Chai Kurat, who unfortunately speaks no English. I don't know what to say. I don't know what I don't. Well, I don't know what to say. A translator is finally found. The investigator, the inspector would like to interrogate you after Craig to be the witness that he really put the money in the safety box. She says the police have a suspect, the hotel's night receptionist. The, the man who they think stole the money, they're going to go and look um, through his house, search his house, see if they could find the envelopes the money was in, um, in the bins or whatever, and they're saying that's really the only suspect it can be. But the couple still don't know whether their money will be returned. What's gone? And say, like, he spent 500, and they find four and a half thousand, so we get that back. Will we get the other 500 back as well? No, you will get what they buy from the man. Not really, no. No. Wouldn't you be till you've got it back in your hand? <laughs> Not good. You get it in your hand, are you? As Dave and Nikki leave, they spot the police cells. They discover British tourist John Fletcher, who has been in prison for a month. I'm shocked. That is awful. Just crammed in cells, and the, the, the Thai mums have been arrested. They've got little toddlers in there. They've got no water or nothing, just tap water, which you're not allowed to drink. Um, they, they just stay in there for months and months on end just to sell the dope. I don't know how they get out. It's morning. John is spending his last day in jail. He'll soon be deported back to Europe. Consular officer Barry Kenyon returns. 
The police are now transferring him to the immigration police who are in charge of deportation matters. In nearly any criminal case, unless it were perhaps uh, speeding, uh, deportation for a foreigner these days will automatically follow conviction in the court. Going to court again. Well, there's a problem. Patia police have charged John with another offence. His tourist visa has expired. Again. Yeah. Overstaying the visa. I'm going to cop everything else. I'm going to cop. Come to the court. It's in John Tien. Where is that, Alpha? John Tien. What's going to happen? Just get a small fine. Visa. Visa. Small fine. And then what? Back here. So if you get. If you can post, if you can pay the fine, 2005, yeah. then they Come bring back, you back here. here. Yeah. But I need to get that fine paid today, otherwise it needs to stay. You come, yeah? yeah. It's a Jom Tien, it's not far. Jom Tien, court. Three miles away at court, Barry is already waiting. The final stage of his saga is to appear in court today for visa overstay of one month. I've been told not to talk to you guys too much. Right. So what happened? We'll have a chat when we get out. Yeah, well, basically, they're going to put me in here. Huh? They're going to bang me in here for the overstay on the visa. Right. Three hours later, John's back from court. What's happening? Well, fine, 2,000. Ten you, huh? Ten you? John can't afford to pay the fine. He will spend an extra month in prison. But at least he now has a few home comforts. Today we have some fruit and a bottle of milk, sandwiches and some chocolate. The value of this is about two pounds, but it makes a lot of difference here in Thailand because the prison diet is very meager and of course it's not remotely European, it's Thai food. So this makes a refreshing change and always goes down well. At the police station, British businessman Kevin Quill has just been released on bail after spending six months in prison on a drugs charge. There's 90, 91 people to one room. Um, the room's 10 metres square. That includes the toilets. The toilets are all open. You've got caught with leg irons. It's, it's not good news. The food, it's not. It's poor. It's very, very poor. Uh, most of the inmates have got scabies, boils, waterborne diseases, it's not good, it's not good. Kevin was arrested after police stopped his car and discovered drugs hidden in his bags. Kevin says he's completely innocent. It's a con, you know, it's a total con, and I've been set up, and I'm extremely concerned about it, and I'm extremely concerned about my safety in this country at the moment. After Kevin's arrest, the police confiscated his car. Having been released on bail, though, he can have it back. Making sure that there's no drugs in the car. Hopefully, you know, don't want getting locked up by the police for two charges, do we? You know, driving away today, someone coming tonight and saying, oh, we've got a tip off. You know what I'm saying? The old rubbish. Kevin must stay in Pattaya for a year until the courts reach a verdict on his case. Meanwhile, he fears for his life. I worry constantly. Every, every pin drop, up at the windows at the house all the time. Um, padlocking everything, checking the doors, the slightest dog barking outside, you're out of bed, very little real sleep, uh, making sure there's, you've constantly got people around you, making sure there's constant people that could be potential witnesses in your car, if you go out anywhere, if you go to the supermarket anywhere, having two or three people with you. It's not nice, it's not nice. Back at the police station, there's good news for Dave and Nicky. The police have found their holiday money in the hotel night receptionist's house. How much? Uh, how much? Three thousand two hundred pounds. There's three thousand two hundred pounds there, so one thousand six hundred and fifty is spent or gone or 
I don't know. Nikki's not the only one confused. He's saying he's like, had 600, but another thousand's gone missing somewhere from when they found it. Do we have who he's saying? But who knows? The police say they don't know where the money is. We would like you to trust his staff that they are reliable and honest. Better than nothing, you know. <laughs> We're happy we've got it's a time the, before some Mimi. <laughs> a majority of the money back. Obviously, we're still upset that we haven't got it all back, but we didn't expect it, so we like policemen. <laughs> but before the couple leave, the money is laid out again. It's time for another photo opportunity. It's been a blooming long few hours here, there and everywhere, but we finally got there, we've signed everything and we've got something back, so we've got to be pretty happy about the situation, so, you know, we're just going to get on with it, enjoy his holiday and see what happens, see what the next um, adventure brings. <laughs> Major Narodet, head of the tourist police, arrives at Kevin's house. He has agreed to provide security for Kevin. It's dangerous out there, it's a jungle out there, and you just need to watch and step where I'm going and what I'm doing, really. The police check the house. The security in Thailand is it's not the same as the UK. If you break the window here, that door's open, you know? But they just put their arm through and, and this is open. There's a gate there, but it's just got a small padlock on it. Well, I mean, you're straight through there, you know. It's... Anytime you want to go out, you call him directly, personally, by yourself, and then he sends someone to escort you if you want to go out from the house. Uh, I want this finished, I want it cleared, then uh, move on. Move on with everything, move on with your life. Move on with everything, hopefully. While Pattaya remains the sex capital of Thailand, the city will continue to be a magnet for criminals. Wirawek Chanson was remanded in custody, having been charged with robbery and attempted murder. John was eventually deported from Thailand. The hotel receptionist, Mr. Tanchai, is serving a three-year jail sentence for stealing Dave and Nikki's holiday money. And Kevin still fears for his life. There's a variety of ways in this city, in this country, that uh, it can get to you.